our apples and snakes. Poetry with bite. Ow. The human voice system is like a musical instrument. At its center is a vibrating element that produces sound with varying tone and loudness. Yo, Johnny had a six string, Martin had a dream, Kay had a tempest full of raw rhyme schemes, Polar had bare skills, some paper and a pen to survive like bare grills and make it to the end. My friends had some creative writing degrees, but that didn't make the future much less frightening to see. So we found a couple mics in a Bristol basement and started speaking in tongues like a Baptist congregation. Jesus was a carpenter, easy, maybe. We tried to reach Olympus on some A4 sheets. I know we had to be in queue with flyer by the seats of our pants, what still stands as a testament to speech. In a world where dark covers every kind of fact, to say something articulate is a defiant act. I'm not saying we're black panthers because we write and rap, but we're here to help free people from the idle chat. Galileo had a telescope, we just have a phrase and a harebrained scheme to tilt the axis of space. So give it up for those who help make it happen today, ladies and gents, the one and only Apple. Snakes. Apples and snakes is not a reptile nor a fruit. It's the poetry behind what the poets do. The story behind the storyteller's value. The platform to expose the root through. The journal of a journey bringing spoken word into the mainstream. Artistic organisation promoting education. Trying to undo the taboo. Challenging the concepts and attitudes. That poetry is just a few dull and gloomy words thrown together with no virtues outside the context of learning in schools. With little or no contemporary relevance. We advocate for rights, fighting to ensure that poets don't become extinct, widening the gap between poetry in motion and poetry in print. A single poem cannot save the world, but it can unpeel a little corner of it, reveal the sticky insides of it, return you to your curious childlike self, delving elbow deep in the pulsing mud and guts of the earth. It does not deal in the iron scaffolds of facts or concrete proof, but a slow, unfurling phrase of quiet truth lingers long in the head, spreads soft as butter across a hungry, porous soul, filling holes of wonder and doubt with language made liquid. It disrobes the moments laying shrouded in ragged cloaks of stutters and chokes, thick, white, silent. Thoughts, feelings, hopes that once defied shape and form suddenly swarm like butterflies defying the prison of cocoons, but no, a single poem cannot save the world, but it proffers its secrets for safekeeping in the seashells of willing ears, and small and unassuming though those shells seem to be, you only need lean a little closer to hear the insistent roar of a defiant sea.